land of hope and glory, mother of the free, how shall we extol thee, who are born of thee? British Emergency Medical Service, anticipating the beginning of the Second World War, set up a specialized unit to handle plastic and reconstructive surgery at the Queen Victoria Hospital in East Grinstead, primarily to treat Royal Air Force burn injuries. The head of this new plastic surgery unit was to be a civilian one of only four plastic surgeons in all of Britain and consultant plastic surgeon to the Royal Air Force, Mr. Archibald Mackindoe. He was a New Zealander and he had a different approach to life than your average Englishman. He cut through a lot of red tape and bullshit and he didn't, he didn't suffer fools gladly and they wanted to make him join the RAF. They said, you know, we, you, you need to have a uniform, we're going to run a military hospital. And he said, no, I'm not. I'm going to run it my way. In Archie McIndoe's Ward 3, now filling with burned airmen from both Britain and Canada, military rank was not acknowledged. You were treated according to the seriousness of your injuries. Against the wishes of the Air Ministry, McIndoe allowed his airmen to continue to wear their uniforms and not the hated hospital blues required for all military patients. To his way of thinking, they were not patients, they were still airmen. And that identity, more than anything else, would be a shield against the staggering reality of their disfigurement. Against much resistance from the senior medical community, in 1941, McIndoe finally had tannic acid and other treatments for drying the skin and promoting scar tissue abolished in RAF hospitals. He began experimenting with simple procedures designed to cleanse and disinfect the burnt area while providing a less painful and non-invasive dressing method. Plastic surgery is a series of small miracles blended together by time. In between operations, the guinea pigs were not ill. Tilly and McIndoe shared an holistic approach to the airmen who came under their care, believing that, especially in disfiguring burn injuries, the emotional scars were no less their concern than the physical scars. Beer was available in the ward to every patient, and they were encouraged to go into town to the pub, sometimes wheeled on a stretcher by a nurse. They had a drinking club in those days, and they decided they'd like to give it a name. And one of the lads said, oh, well, we're nothing but a bunch of guinea pigs. And that's where the name originated. With typical black humour that the guinea pigs had, uh, the treasurer was a man in a wheelchair who wouldn't be able to abscond with the funds. The Their first honorary president was the boss of Ward 3, Mr. Archie McIndoe. In 1944, 
in a letter from Mackindo to all the guinea pigs. He summed up the objectives of the club by writing, we are the trustees of each other. We do well to remember that the privilege of dying for one's country is not equal to the privilege of living for it. It just goes to show. For many people, it was the beginning of life rather than the end. In recognition of his contribution to medical science, Archie McIndoe became Sir Archie McIndoe when he was knighted in 1947. He continued his work at Queen Victoria Hospital until his death in 1960. He was 59 years old. We are making